After defeating the government 14 times to amend the EU withdrawal bill, those of us in the House of Lords have been accused of an un-British coup, a power grab that could derail Brexit. We peers have been called unelected wreckers, saboteurs, rebels. But Theresa May wanted to bypass Parliament altogether. First, by trying to give us no say in the decision to trigger Article 50. Then, her government wanted Britain to leave the EU, whatever the cost, with or without a deal. But Brexit is not take it or leave it. Giving the Houses of Parliament a say over the implications of Brexit is not a power grab. This is giving power back to the people. Nor have the Lords weakened the government's negotiating power in Brussels. We want the best deal in the best interests of the British people, even if that means staying in the customs union and ideally also the single market. Far from sabotage, the peers have given the British people, through Parliament, a meaningful say over Brexit. That, to me, is true democracy. Amen. I've got to keep a bit calm here. OK, so, Karen, <clears throat> you and your unelected cronies have not only inflicted defeat on this government, but on democracy. What you have done is insult democracy. You are an enemy of democracy. Not a single Briton voted for you or any of the members of the House of Lords, and yet you have defied a government voted for by 13.6 million people and a course of action voted for by 17.4 million people. And, and, you know, this brings into question for me the whole, the whole of our democratic system. Is it all of us, everyone, who are involved in our system, or is it a bunch of rich, connected elitists like yourself who, who think that by dint of their education and their connections, can you know what's best for the nation? You actually said in the House of Lords, on one of the many votes where you've been trying to defeat Brexit, you actually said, you said that Parliament knows best Parliament knows what's best for the people and the country. You forget your role, Karen. You are the servants. We are the masters. You do what we elected. You're not even elected. How about, and can, no, I'm, I'm, let me say this and then I'm done and then I'm going to back out. People, <laughs> not the people who voted in that thing. They have, <clears throat> they have connections <clears throat> with Brussels. There are, there are th no, let me finish. There are 30 former MEPs who collect pensions. They're allowed to vote. They're allowed to influence what happens. And I I want to talk about the percentage attendances. You have attended 20, and 21 per cent of debates this year. You've collected 11 grand in fees. I've attended well, much more than 21 per cent of no, debates. No, well, that's what's on the official record, Karen. I checked the official record and it says 21 per cent. You've collected oh, 11 grand. Far, oh, you're talking about debates. Collected, You've got to talk about my attendance okay. record in total. It's far higher than 21 Well, I'm talking about so don't, the don't, debates. Don't, don't get false facts. 21 per cent. Thank you for uh, really, really shameful. In, 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 insulting me personally. And you, of course, are an it's elected in, individual, it, aren't you? It's not insulting you yeah, personally. So anyone who has a say has to be elected. Do you realise the role of the House of Lords? If we lost... Yes, if and we you're lost, contravening your role. If we lost the House of Lords in the form that it is, and if you have an elected House of Lords, the whole dynamic will change. At the okay. moment, the Commons has the final say, and we know that. Our job is to rev revise, review, scrutinise legislation and make the you Commons have think again. Your so, so we're not, oh, no, we're no, not no, enemies of the people, people. we're yes. guardians yes. of the you nation. Are not let's, pu let's, let's, let's pull back a, a, a second. I, I just want to say that um, I don't think you're my enemy or anybody's enemy, and I don't think you're my enemy. I'm talking think, about the House of Lords. No, I, know, I just think it was slightly a bit personal, but it's I am not with personal, you on it's the. It's about the House okay, of Lords. Let me, let me, Karen is a Lord. Let's, 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 All right, I'm with you, and I always have been, by the way, on the need for the House of Lords to reform. And I don't allow that view of mine to swing or sway depending on the political climate. I'm very consistent in that. I do believe the House of Lords needs to reform. Absolutely. And I, and I think that actually it's very interesting in this debate how the tables have turned, because it's always been uh, liberals with a small and big L that have been calling for the House of Lords to reform, but now suddenly Conservatives are calling for it. In fact, two-thirds of the public are now calling for yes, it. Yes, Which is, a, I think, a fantastic development. There was a referendum on that actually, tomorrow, it would be a landslide. Yeah, but the reform is about abolishing. Our, so, so, yes, this is yes, about reforming. Reform is different it's a very small minority yes, want to yes, abolish the House yeah, of Lords. People yeah. realise the value of the institution. Is reform is different to abolition. Um, reform would include an elected second term <laughs> with longer terms. But what, what I will say... <laughs> What I, well, the last thing I'll say, and yeah. the last thing I'll say, is that I think um, while they're there, before reform, 
yeah. will happen or has happened, it is important that they're allowed to do their jobs, which is scrutinise legislation. Scrutinise, yes. not over time. Scrutinise, right. scrutinise. Yes. Yes. Mr. Scrutinize. My Lord, shall we move the debate on a little bit, yes. Karen? Because I wonder if I can refer you to the front page of today's uh, Daily Mail. No, it's not the picture of Her Majesty Lord to reign over it. Isn't there surprise. a danger? Isn't what there a say? danger that? with what you and your colleagues are doing. Most of the time, what you and your colleagues do is a very valuable exercise. And don't take this the wrong way. You largely go unnoticed. You largely go unnoticed and it carries on. If you continue to do this, are you not concerned there could come a tipping point where the level of anger that we've seen, which is fair enough, but perhaps a tad personal, but the level of anger that we've seen from Carol actually starts to really put in jeopardy the importance of what a second chamber does. And I know you, like me, regularly collect copies of this newspaper. Indeed, okay. this one, this one yeah. featured you earlier. Same the newspaper. House of the Balanced as so, ever. So, so this doesn't this... mean... It... Hold on one second. This doesn't mean it reflects the whole tone. But you, you should be a revising chamber, absolutely no question. I think in this case, Karen, you're in danger of becoming a rewriting chamber in that you want to rewrite the not, poll. Not at all. Yes. Go because, ahead. Because what, if you think about what we've done, every piece of legislation that comes from the Commons goes through all the processes and then comes to us. The university's bill last year, we had 500 amendments in the House of Lords because it's with our experience, with our expertise, yeah, yeah. with several Absol people, yeah, leaders yeah, yeah. of Absol universities, giving their input that helped to improve that legislation that then goes back to the Commons. And it's up to them to accept or not. Here, if you look at the 14 amendments that we won, every one of them, there's a reason to give Parliament a meaningful say. The government is saying, We'll, we'll give you a vote at the end on, on the final deal or no deal, but if you don't agree, we crash out on WTO, or WTO rules. I'm sorry. That is, the public will not accept that. We're saying a meaningful vote means if Parliament doesn't agree, it means maybe going back to negotiate or maybe even remaining in the European Union if that's the best option. I just think it's so interesting because Brexiteers voted for Britain to retain and re-seize uh, re its sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So now we have the sovereignty of British institutions, notably the two Houses of Parliament, suddenly they don't like our sovereignty anymore because it produces a result that's not what they say they want. The reality is you cannot cast the House of Lords as subverting the will of the British people yes, because yeah. we don't know whether the British people voted for a hard or soft Brexit because the question wasn't asked. The question was, do you want to remain or leave the EU? No one was asked about whether they want a customs partnership the Lords get um, way, or to reign in the single not happen. currently. And, that, that, and that's not what people voted the for. The bottom theme, line is, uh, if you cared so much about parliamentary sovereignty, why did, yeah. why did, and a lot of the guys in the Lords did, gave away parliamentary sovereignty 40 years ago when, to Brussels. You've given it away. You, Listen, you we, by the way, the Parliament, this whole nonsense about giving away sovereignty, you do have. you realise we've had the best ago. we've had the best of both worlds? But I have seen with 12 a new years, 12 years I've seen the legislation that affects our day-to-day -day lives is made in our Parliament. Mm. Very little of it is the ECJ having the final say. Most of our cases are resolved in our courts at the ultimate, the Supreme what Court. You guys want so this is nonsense about sovereignty. I think, it's fair, I think it is. It's, it's fair to say that until reform happens, and this may well encourage reform, you're right, Nick, well, that's I, and point. I'd yeah. embrace I it wholeheartedly, it's about time, but until reform happens, there are genuine questions that need to be asked about the way in which we Brexit, to our first point, and how the House of Lords need to be able to do their jobs. Now, some of these genuine questions come around to the arrangements between the Customs Union and Britain and the single market. Even, even our Foreign Secretary was pressed on this earlier. Let's, let's uh, watch what he had to say about it. The Prime Minister has made it very clear where, uh, as she said in her Mansion House speech, we're coming out of the Customs Union, we're coming out of the, of the single market, we're taking back control of our, of our laws and, uh, and all the rest of it. But if you don't, will you resign? As she said, we're coming out of the Customs yeah. Union, we're coming out of the single market. It's a and, core issue And for I have you. no doubt that uh, that's what uh, she and uh, the rest of the government are going to deliver. And so here there are, there are serious questions, and I think, Carol, all of us can agree that they are quite substantive issues, that, that there seems to be a confusion, even at Cabinet level, and until, until this reform that you are so passionately arguing for, that I'd back you on, um, <laughs> happens, I think Karan should be allowed to do his job so, so, without so, being yeah, so, And also, look at the reality. Is the government doing a good job in negotiating You're with Brexit? You're stopping them doing So let's have a look at the statistics. You're let's stopping la Let's them. have a look at the statistics. 56% of people think the government is doing a bad job and only 28% think they're doing a good job. So now, our job as parliament, so now we respect people's it's polls, Karen. Our, it's, <laughs> our, it's our job as parliamentarians to challenge government continually on a day-to-day basis. They're doing their jobs. And they're, and they're not a, right. Brexit they're was not jobs. a blank cheque. It was not leave on any terms.